To do the interpreter with deferred substitutions instead of equal substitutions, we get to throw away the subst function, but we will change our interpreter from taking an expression and a list of function definitions to an expression, a deferred substitution, and a list of function definitions. And the deferred substitution, the other word for that is environments. So we're going to make a type env, and we will build up these substitutions as environments. Right? We will have an empty environment that will correspond to the empty bubble that we saw at the beginning. We'll have extend environment, which takes a binding and adds it to the front of the environment. Like this binding is going to be something like x equals 1, and we see uh, bind here is going to produce one of those bindings. You give it a symbol like x, a value like 1, and it'll put it together in a binding, which you can add on to an environment starting, say, from the empty environment. And finally, we're going to have lookup, which takes a symbol, takes an environment, and finds that symbol in the environment to give you the, the number back. And of course, it has to look from in this environment from the beginning to find x equals 2 as opposed to x equals 1, for example. Um, again, empty m corresponds to the empty bubble. x equal 1, if we want to represent this bubble in terms of syntax here, in terms of a plate expression, then that means we started with the empty environment, the empty bubble. We added a binding of x equals 1, uh, by extending that environment. So this plate expression represents the same thing as this picture of a bubble. If we have y equals 2, x equals 1, that would be extend m of bind y to 2 and extend m to bind x to 1 of the empty environment. Concretely, this is how we're going to implement those types. So a binding uh, is a new type that has one variant bind that binds a name to a value, where a name is a symbol and a value is a number. We're going to define the type a, uh, environment to just be an alias for list of binding. Right? And that means that empty env must be a list, like the empty list, and extend env must return a list, which cons does. So extend env takes one binding and an environment it gives us a new binding. That is, it takes a list, or it takes a binding and a list and gives us back a new list. That's exactly what cons does. But we're going to use the names empty env and extend env to be more clear uh, as we write our interpreter and read our code. And that just leaves the lookup function. The job of the lookup function is to act like interp when it hits an identifier represented by some symbol uh, and perform some substitutions that were deferred uh, as recorded in the environment. So for example, if we look up x in the empty environment, that means we had the original expression x with no substitutions, so that would be a free variable error. On the other hand, if we reach an x in a context where we meant to substitute 1 for x, then that means the lookup function should return 1. Right? That's in an extended environment that binds x to 1 starting from the empty environment. And as one last example, if we're looking up x and we have uh, an extended environment with y bound to 1 and then x bound to 2, then of course we should return the 2. So lookup takes a symbol and an environment, and to implement lookup we have to remember that environment is actually a list of binding. So that drives the template. We're going to have a type case on a list of binding for that environment. So we have either empty or a cons, where cons uh, was created by extendEnv. If we're looking up a symbol in an empty environment, that means it was a free variable, so we just raise the error. Otherwise, we're in the cons case, where we have one binding and uh, the template suggests a recursion on the rest of the environment. That one binding in this example, say, b stands for bind x1, and what we want to do is, combine, is compare the x in the binding to the x that we were given, where x is in. So to get the identifier x out of binding, that's bind name, and then we can compare it to n that comes in to look up. If those are the same, then what do we want to return? We want to return 1. That is the bind val of b. Otherwise, we recur and look in the rest of the environment. So in this case, we find the 1. In this case, we don't find x, so we don't return 1. But we recur with the rest of the environment, and we find 2. Notice also that if our example were bind x1, bind x2, then we would find this one first. We would find the most recent extension of the environment and return a 1, which is exactly what we want lookup to do.